First, I want to start with a little question. Who's been here last year? Does anybody remember the essence what I spoke about last year? Anybody? Well, what did I say last year? I mess. I mess. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, what, what I actually said last year is that IMS is great. And actually, I think that Kamayo is really, really great. And as for many things, um, IMS and Kamayo are a great foundation to build on. But, okay, now let's take a little look into reality. What is IMS basically about? Everybody knows that Graham Bell invented the real market usable fixed line phone. There are some others like Antonio Mucci, I don't know if that's correctly spelled, or Philip Rice, who also built some telephones, but uh, Graham Bell was the first one who really did it for the real great market. The first mobile phones arrived in the market like, like 1984. And that was a big revolution. Like, uh, we have one of those fancy Motorola uh, smartphones ourselves nowadays. But since 2000, basically, uh, all this fixed line telephony is declining in favor of mobile phones. Uh, there are some statistics that, um, that actually say that one third of the American households are now using a mobile phone instead of a fixed line telephone. And then again, there was another revolution in 2003, Skype. We don't like them, but they still arrived on the market and brought mass market uh, void to the market. But to get to our point, if we look about IMS, if we look about what's going on, it's still all about telephony. It could be fixed, it could be void, it could be mobile. <coughs> And probably sooner or later we will see a decline <coughs> in use of mobile usage in favor of VoIP, of VoIP and WebRTC. Okay, but now there's a new kid in town. Um, WebRTC is really uh, changing the market. It's, WebRTC is an emerging standard um, for real-time communications. And I think WebRTC will actually really change the way co we communicate um, forever. And WebRTC is about converged communication. So you really want to integrate your calls, your telephony into whatever kind of application. But again and again <coughs> and again, and I just will keep continue telling this, you will, if you launch a WebRTC service, you will still want scalability, redundancy, you will still want accounting, you want rich services. And there's actually one more quite important question. If you, if you launch a WebRTC-only service, are all your friends and all your buddies on the same service? <coughs> and now some more facts. If we, if we look at WebRTC, at the moment we've got support for WebRTC in Google Chrome, in Firefox, in Firefox the Nightly Build, in Opera. For other browsers like Internet Explorer or Safari, we will need a plugin and then it works. But if we need a plugin, actually we don't need WebRTC. So if, if we take the numbers from Google Chrome and Firefox and Opera, we end up with a 62% market share. At 62%, well, it's not really satisfying, at least not for me. And more than that, we've still got some um, compatibility issues like VPH and H.264 and DTLS and uh, so other security measures. And after all, if you, I think if you really want to be successful, you have to look for the user numbers. If I look at the mobile domain, we've got something like 6.8 billion mobile phone users. And even if you take the most popular um, social network, Facebook, we don't like them either, but anyway, um, they have 1.3 billion users. It's a really big gap between the 6.8 million mobile users and the 1.3 billion uh, Facebook users. 
and it gets even worse if we if we start looking at uh, if we take those 62 percent who of those Facebook users are actually capable of WebRTC <coughs> because they're using Firefox or Chrome. So I think we really need to go for a converged solution. <coughs> converged solution, at least, at least. I, I think WebRTC is definitely a thing of the future. But at least for a period of time, I think we need a multi-channel access to our services. And multi-channel, that could be definitely web or WebRTC. It could be fixed access, wired hardware. It could be any kind of mobile access. And of course, since we want to reach more than our 1.3 billion Facebook users, we need to interwork with other technologies. Does anybody know a real good architecture for converged services? That's actually designed for converged services? Yeah, okay. The internet. True fucking. <laughs> 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 yeah. The idea behind IMS actually always from the beginning was about having some converged services. If anybody did see my presentation on my talk last yesterday, we always have this proxy CSCF which will convert all kinds of access methods. It could be WebRTC, ZIP or WebSockets. It could be the mobile domain with a VoLT or a ZIP via IMS. It could be a fixed line client. And it will basically convert this to a basic standard ZIP. And if we, if we take the IMS approach, with this proxy CSCF, we can basically continue using our application servers we have for fixed line, for, for mobile networks, for all kinds of services. We can use our existing interconnect, we can actually use our existing charging, we can use everything we already have in place. We don't have to reinvent the wheel, we just say, okay, we stick with the IMS core we have, and we just connect a new device, a new kind of service to our platform, which in this case might be WebRTC. Does anybody have an idea where we could use Kamayu in this setup? No one? Okay. Everywhere. Exactly. Almost everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we use Kamayu as a proxy CSCS with a great WebSocket support by Peter Dunkley and others, uh, like, like this uh, Media Proxy MG for uh, RTP transcoding. We use Kamayu as an IMS core, we do use Kamayu free switch asterisk for application servers, and of course we use Kamayu for our interconnect. Okay. There are still a few things missing in Kamayu, and I think uh, Peter already pointed that out. Um, the configurations, uh, the example configurations, which I already showed yesterday, they have some basic support for WebSockets, but the media is not really handled by that configuration. So that's one thing that's missing. And especially um, at the moment, it's based on this RTP proxy NG, which will pretty soon be replaced by this RTP engine by Zipwise. <laughs> I always have to say a big thank you to the Zipwise guys for putting all this effort into RTP uh, processing. Uh, we ourselves have already an updated configuration which is working, where we really have WebRTC integrated into IMS and um, I think most likely maybe next week or the week after we will push that into the examples directory of Kamai. So everybody who listened to my talk yesterday will actually be able to run a WebSockets enabled IMS core. Okay, um, I don't know about the time. Are there any questions? Uh, I was too fast, I guess. <laughs> Sorry. Plenty of questions now. Oh, we have time for questions, so we can uh, ask about this. Uh, I missed uh, the slide uh, from yesterday will be 
put online, I guess, by uh, Karsten, so we will have uh, more on the technical mm -hmm. details. <coughs> so, uh, some of the things I was thinking earlier with the presentation on ephemeral was whether that would work particularly well with the HSS. If you're converging WebRTC and IMS, um, how do you sort of square the circle of having this nice web-based location with it all being very sticky in the HSS? Okay, great. Right. Um, what we basically will need to do is that um, on the process CSCF, uh, we need we still need to do the up, uh, upstream registration towards the server CSCF and towards the home subscriber server. So what we will basically have to do there are some things that we might still need to add, like adding a web service on the proxy CSCF uh, where we uh, get some one-time credentials. And where we, um, for the upstream registration, um, will replace them with the original credentials. That's basically the idea we, we have about uh, this. We will use quite a similar mechanism to the old ephemeral stuff, but we will, on the proxy CSF, simply replace the uh, uh, authentication credentials with the real ones. Uh, so the client can use some one-time credentials. Thanks. Other questions? I have one more about like uh, the market because IMS it's mainly for the big operators which are <coughs> kind of slow to call that. Um, I know some people here might already use it, but how you feel this happening on the market as you are closer to it? Because IMS, deploying IMS took years, so that was year 2003 when they started to become like a buzzword, 2004 eventually, 5, 6 height, and now it's more or less moving because of the 4G. Yeah. Uh, so consider that took 10 years to get to the core with IMS, how long will it take to get operators with WebRTC on their services? Actually, I think um, WebRTC for mobile operators or for bigger operators might take another maybe four to five years. That's my personal ex expectation on this. Um, I know, at least for Germany, that all major operators say, okay, we don't want to touch anything open source, and uh, unless we can buy it from Oracle or like Packet, we don't buy it. So, so you see there's an issue with vendors bringing the big fridges on the market? Yeah. Okay. Um, but there's actually another trend that I'm seeing at the moment, and that's basically that, um, that at least the big operators are trying. Uh, they are taking a look and maybe a little bit evaluating, but yeah, careful, careful. Okay, because I know from France and have some guys here from Origin, if I'm not wrong, you are also involved with uh, Ribbon, or you know more about it, because I've seen a lot of uh, um, news about Ribbon these days, like uh, it's on top of Origin France, if I'm not wrong, and it's more like an open chat, if you can have the microphone. So it's, uh, how is that? It's uh, a bit more open, it's a pressure from, I think it's free, like an operator which I, I understood is quite libertarian. And yeah, it's, a, it's an OTT application, so it's not bound to, to an orange contract or an orange subscription. And uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> operators are slow. Okay. And, uh, 
all inside operators is for Linux. Libon itself, it's uh, also with WebRTC or it's just... Yeah, we are working on WebRTC right okay. now. In the next month it will be really... So this could be a trend work. like, okay, not really in the core, but as an OTT, and eventually the OTT will become the core. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yes, we, we also have uh, an RCS card. Okay. So, but or in, uh, they are taking uh, the foot in both. <laughs> That's great because it's a uh, uh, move forward from you know the big companies opening to you know, add in the applications like this one. And as I said, I heard uh, like it interconnects with others, so it's also like uh, peering. It's not like a wall garden. Yeah, this is the, the idea. So that's, that's not having wall gardens on the mobile operator. I probably it's the first time or. Um, uh, hi. Uh, one uh, thing about is whether there is any interest in IMS from the middle-income developing world, because um, sometimes big operators from um, from Europe and America, when they uh, move into these markets, you would think they just replicate their existing infrastructure, uh, and but sometimes they actually like to do things using more. Uh, small-scale kind of local methods, local vendors, and surprisingly enough, don't always integrate with their mainline infrastructure in these, you know, these markets. Um, the other thing is that, in general, uh, larger operators in the developing world, they, of course, you know, the big Oracle box and so on presents an affordability challenge for them, but methodologically, they like to uh, mimic the patterns that they see in large operators in developed countries. Do you discern that happening at all? Any um, what I at least see, well, what I've seen more than once, is that, uh, that some big operators uh, said, okay, we, 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 we take new methods, we take new technology, we take maybe open source, and we take it in a far away subsidiary, we try it out there, and, <coughs> and uh, surprisingly it works uh, quite well, so uh, they adapt to use it in the main in the main business area as well. So that's a typical case I see quite often. 